Welcome back. In the last video I showed you how to make a woodcut edition of prints. Now we are going to focus on what to do with that block whenever it's done. I personally like to retire the block. Generally speaking, you carve a big X through it and throw it in the river. But me, I like to paint it up, slap it up on a wall, and give an opportunity for people to really appreciate everything that goes into making a woodcut. It becomes an art piece all on its own even though it is a mirror of the original print that you made. You can go about this several different ways. Since we're using MDF, I like to start with doing a layer of gesso. Now why gesso? Well, with acrylic paint, it helps to seal the MDF wood. MDF likes to do something called delaminating. And delaminating is as fun as it sounds. It's where your block will just separate as it absorbs moisture over time. Now the acrylic paint will give it a better opportunity to resist that since acrylic is basically like a plastic. So what you're going to do is you're gonna grab some gesso and you are gonna grab the uh, stiffest brush you have. If you leave brush strokes on it, it's pretty much fine. They're gonna disappear as it soaks into the wood, but you wanna make sure and hit everything at least once. Now, it's not entirely necessary to do this. I know plenty of people, um, Dennis McNett, Noosh, those sort of people don't use gesso and you know that's their business I tend to use cheaper paints because I'm a cheaper person and it really helps brighten all of my colors up without them soaking into the wood plus as mentioned before it's gonna help you with that extra little bit of a layer of resistance against nature now saying that it protects against moisture I mean moisture in a house if you have this outside it's probably gonna still delaminate but this little bit's really going to help prolong the life of this little baby. I will say, I've only been doing these for a few years, and I don't really know how long they last. Hopefully forever. Now talking about colors, I am a very basic person when it comes to colors. I go off of two color schemes, analogous and complementary. I like to have the foreground or background be a color that is complementary to each other. So if I'm using orange in the front, like I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to use blue in the background. And then I'm also going to have analogous colors to go with it. This is an opportunity for this to look good without really too much effort. So whenever you're painting, make sure to throw yourself into fast forward because it's boring. Um, I decided to go with an orange-ish top so that's a lot of browns and, and whites and reds and mixed in with orange um, and this blending is not how blending really works in the real world because you're not really worried about darkness too much because all of your darkness is gonna come from the top layer of ink right you already did the hard part and you did the cross hatching you did all the shading that's going to exist on the initial block like we did in the last video so now you need to kind of make gradients and color scales. If you do something that is too detailed, there's a good chance it's not actually going to show up in the finished print or the finished block anyway. So don't beat yourself up too much if this is kind of boring looking at first. I mean, it still looks kind of cool. Look what I did with those little feathers. Um, but you don't have to worry about that too much. Just keep it with general colors. Keep things very simple you the most complicated blending that you could do probably won't even actually show up when the thing is done so think of it a little bit like a coloring book you're doing very bold things because the boldness will stand out with all the black but you're not worried about too much detail and complexity all right when you're done feel good about your decisions and let's uh, get some newspaper down and flip it over as awkwardly as possible so continuing with the gesso idea in the front we're gonna paint the back and the outside of this with acrylic black ink you can use whatever color you're rolling up ink on the top it doesn't totally matter um, black just seems to be more of a traditional nicer sort of thing and I will save you from how boring this actually is it takes so much longer than you think to do these sort of things if anybody has some tips let me know Acrylic spray paint would totally work too. Same idea, it's gonna soak into the wood and help protect it and give it a nice even color. Those edges can be pretty pesky. I really recommend putting it on a piece of newspaper. Not exactly to protect your table, which you know is nice, but 
if you're doing like a die cut type of thing, the ink will actually try to seep underneath it and go into the front of your block. So having it on a piece of newspaper makes it really easy that you can just remove it very quickly and let it dry. Mix your ink up just like you did in the last video and then roll it up. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous thing to watch. I'm never not impressed seeing this, even on my own. It takes a few more passes than normal because you want to put a very thin layer of ink down as you go. You don't want to glob the whole thing up because it will push past where you want the ink to go. All right. So what we're going to do now is make sure this thing is uh, presentable to the world. Um, and we are going to drill some holes in the back and make it so it can hang on a wall. I prefer wire hanging devices. Uh, I know a lot of people use sawtooth hangers for this sort of situation, and that's fine. Most galleries don't accept that, though, so you might as well make it so it's a very universally available piece. So with putting wire, dev uh, wire hanging devices on it, you're going to be putting two holes that are going to have little D hooks on them that are going to make it so the wire hangs from it. And you need those about two thirds up or one third down from the top. This will make it so it has enough sag that it'll hang off the wall nicely. You can measure this. This is the first time I've ever measured one and it was for this video. I normally just wing it. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Since it's on a wire, you can even it out even if it's crooked on the wall. So I'm measuring about a third in on each side as well as a third down from the top. Boop. Make sure you make that sound effect or else it won't work. Get your handy dandy drill out and you're gonna put a small drill bit in it. This is gonna be making a pilot hole. You can't just screw the screw down by itself. I mean, I wish it could, but you need a small drill bit to make this work. And again, if you don't have a drill, um, I don't use a hammer and nail. That'll be fine, like a small hammer. So these are the D hooks I was talking about. I really, really like them. I use them in all my artwork that I hang. And they're very simple. Just the screw goes in the hole, and then that screw goes down in the hole that you already made. You don't want to drill all the way down at first. So then go ahead and give it the old whoop. All right, got one in. Now we're gonna do the second one, same way as before. This is kind of awkward. Your fingers aren't used to holding things like this. So just, if it doesn't work the first time, meh. Do yourself a favor though, whenever you're putting those holes in, try not to do it on a place where the front of the block is really shallow, one you carved really deep, because it will show through. Have some extra paint and cover it up. All right, get your wire. I like using plastic coated wire because it protects my fingies. And then you're gonna have a little bit of extra wire left over. Whatever extra you have, you need to wrap it around. Never tie a knot. My teacher told me this when I was in college. He said, never tie a knot with wire. So if you tie a knot with wire, it can break. And you know what, I believed him. I've never gone the other way, so I can't say it doesn't work. So wrap it all the way up. The tension of the wrap will hold really the heaviest things up. It's crazy how well it works. And when you're done, put your hand underneath it. You don't have to do it like that. And then unveil your beauty to the world. Look at that little guy. See ya.